Yeah, this is it right here. This defines me. Let's do it. Let's do it. As far as I can remember, I always wanted to be a barber. This is the place where magic is born. This is my stage. I'm here to perform. As a young, expire, inspiring uh, young barber, male and or female, who choose to jump into the barbering world, you have to understand what you're getting yourself into. A lot of times people, and today, barbers are in a, a it's almost like a fad. You know, we, we go through careers and some people are like, oh man, barbering is hype right now. You know, it's like hip hop. Mm -hmm. And so you have this thing, but you have to understand what barbering entails. Barbering entails this. If you're the type of person that like to be at the concerts early on time and you want to be there, well guess what? You're not, because it's your job to get those people ready for the concert. You're the type of person that likes to be at all of the parties, guess what? You'll be there for last call for alcohol, because it's your job to get everybody ready for the party. If you're not willing to stand up for many hours out the day, the average barber stands on his feet 10 to 12 hours a day. If you're not the type of person that likes to stand all day, you might want to rethink if you want to be a barber. Understanding being a barber is also entails certain things that you need to know. You have to have a certain amount of wisdom to be a barber. A lot of people don't like to talk about that. Why? It's because people are going to come to you and they're going to talk to you about things that you might know about and some things that you might not know about, but you still have to be able to give them a good word. Meaning, I've never been married, but I have customers that come in been in a situation that might be going through divorce or, you know, dealing with a relationship that might be rocky. You have to go inside of yourself and get some of the experiences that you got. And when your customer is wrong, you might need to tell them, hey, man, you might need to spend a little bit more time with your family. And that might change some things. You know, how does my outfit look, dog? How am I looking? Well, you look cool, but I don't know if you look that cool wearing a suit and Jordans. You might want to put on some nice shoes because your wife liked the nice shoes and she told me that she likes to see you dress nice from head to toe. You can't wear Jordans everywhere. See, because we are the counselor, we are the motivator, we are the fashion consultant, sometimes we are a math and English tutor to the youngsters. We are so many different things as being a barber. It's not just the fundamentals of cutting hair. So what I'm saying is you have to know if this is something that you really love, then go hang out at the barber shop for a few hours a week before you even make the decision to say, I'm going to be a barber because it's cool. It's a lot of things cool, but once you engage and say, hey, I'm going to do this, well, barber school now, when I was going to school, it was only like 10000 Now it's 30000 So don't waste $30,000 and time, which is nine months out, out your life, doing something that is just for time being, I just want to do it right now. No, make sure you're dedicated to this, you know what I mean? And then... Once you become a barber, you are not a master barber. I make that very clear when I talk and I speak on the stage. I let people know that a master barber takes time. You have to put in the time, the energy, the effort to understand how your clippers work, how to break those clippers down, how to open those clippers up, how to clean those clippers, how to put your blades on, how to work your shears, how to customer service, business management. That makes a, those are all the fundamentals of a master barber. But people say, oh, I'm a master barber as soon as you get out of school. How? How did you become that? I mean, if we put ourselves in, uh, most of us all know who Bruce Lee is. Most of us all know who Kobe Bryant is. But the average person, since you think you're a master, do you think you can beat Bruce Lee up if you had to go head up, squabble with him? I don't think so.
just because you got out of karate school. You think you can go head up with Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant just because you graduated from college? Well, you better check yourself because you're dealing with people. This is what they do all day, every day, and they get paid for it. So you have to be very careful on what you call yourself before you call yourself a master. See, the Instagram world allows you to say what you want to say. So people say, I'm a master barber, I'm a celebrity barber, but are you really? Ask yourself that. So for me, I say, hey, master your skills. Get up under a mentor. Get up under a master barber and let him train you first so you can become a great master barber, so you can become legendary, so you can become a person who is for his community because a master barber is a part of his community. He deals with city issues, official city issues the master barber does. Why? It's because people, whether it be a city official, a politician, a pastor of a church, they all go to the barber shop first and they talk about it before they make their decision. So a lot of decisions are made are made in the barber shop before they're made on Capitol Hill. For real, y'all. For real, y'all. I'm here today with Jason Williams from Yak and Roll Barbershop. Jason, how you doing today? Good, brother. How you doing? Good, good. Right. So, how long have you been barber? Oh, man. First, I want to say, man, I appreciate what you're doing. Oh, uh, big oh, shout out to you. And this right here, I think it's a great thing that you're doing, man. And, you know, once again, man, appreciate it. How long have we been cutting hair? Yeah. Uh, been cutting hair since uh, 1999. 1999? Yeah, so we're going on almost 20 years by next year. Okay. So, okay. You got your start here in Fayetteville? Started here in Fayetteville. Mom bought me a pair of clippers uh, around tax season. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, hey, the rest was history, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, what uh, barber school was it? I went to Regency. You went to Regency? Mm -hmm. I went to Regency. Went to Regency? Yeah. Where you went to Regency? I came out of 99. I came out of Regency December 99. December 99? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it had to be like, maybe 98 is when okay. I, you know, like, when it came out. I was like one of the first students that went there. Gotcha, gotcha. So you, they started at 97. Mm -hmm. So you finished like right when I was coming in. It was passing. Possibly, class. possibly. Because, yeah. you know, the, the town was kind of chaotic. He had just opened the school. Gotcha. He just, uh, you know, cut the ribbon and all that. He was like the third, I was the third student in there. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. You was early on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Okay. Um, so yeah. while you was in there, I was trying to save up money to go. Probably so. Probably so. You know, we all had different taxes getting in there. Right. You know, mine was uh, going through VR. Gotcha. So uh, I went through them. Um, I had either the Army mm -hmm. or cutting hair on, you know, two choices that I had to, to, to either, you know, start my life. Gotcha. And uh, I figured that uh, cutting hair was a hobby anyway. Mm -hmm. So something I wanted to do. So, and, yeah, here I am now. So did you start uh, going to barber school right after high school? Um, let me see, I probably in 96, so not gotcha. quite. I think I waited about a year. I worked um, odd jobs. And I think I got a feel of what I didn't want. Okay. And then uh, I think maybe after a year and a half, I decided to cut hair. It was man, the best decision I ever made. Good. Yeah, so like, when I was trying to go to barber school, it was tough as far as trying to figure out, okay, the hours, mm -hmm. how to get the money to go, and what exactly, um, you know, it took to actually be in the shop mm -hmm. and trying to, you know, do the book portion of it mm -hmm. and then get your kit. Mm -hmm. um, now I notice that they have more barber school, more opportunities now mm -hmm. with the tele um, technical schools and all that. Yeah. When we went, it was all private. Pretty much. So, Pretty much. like, way more expensive. Yeah. So that's another added stress yeah. to going to barber school. Um
when I finally got my bar license, I still continued working that job, mm -hmm. but I worked uh, at the barbershop on the weekends. That was any time I had free. But uh, I think trying to balance the two helped me out. Um, but then actually when I got probably my, maybe my last year of, uh, or my last, my first year, first full year of cutting hair, I was able to uh, just, you know, quit that other job and go right. full time in the barbershop. So when was that? Uh, I think, that, I believe that was 99. Okay. I believe it was 99. Okay. And uh, so that's when I started working on Fort Bragg. Gotcha. So it was a transitioning part from school to finishing school, keeping that full-time job, and then going to a full-time barbershop job because, you know, I had to make, I had to make two incomes, you know, to the first full-time job as a warehouse, cutting hair on the side, until I found a full-time barbering gig that was going to pay all the bills. Gotcha. So that, that pretty much helped out for me. I don't know what they're doing now in school, um, but it's a template that needs to be done so that way they can know how to balance either their other job in school. You can't just go to school unless they got some type of uh, program where they get paid for it. Right. It's, it's a hard situation. I understand the struggle. So uh, that's what worked out for me. The, okay. So when you got into the barbershop, did you have any second guess? Like, did I pick the right mm. decision? Um, hmm. I think, uh, I think I knew I wanted it. What was discouraging was, you know, nobody wanted to come. Nobody gotcha. wanted to come get the haircut from the new guy. Gotcha. That's one thing that was discouraging. But, uh, How long did that normally last? That, that part? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it felt like a year. It felt like years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it felt like, you know, I guess you can start thinking about it. It could have been the wrong career choice. But um, I, I think that, well, the encouragement from the people in there. Yeah. You know, your barbers, your fellow barbers in there that have been in there longer than you. Gotcha. They can encourage you, gotcha. and uh, you know you ain't cutting no hair. <laughs> you watching them cut hair. They're gonna encourage you. And trust me, and, and as long as I've been in, and I know yourself too, you feel the pain for the rookie. Oh, yeah. yeah, you oh, like, yeah. Oh, man. I hope you make it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I enjoyed it, and when I got it, one head, one head to cut, um, I didn't take it for granted. You know, I wanted to make it my best. I spoke to people. Uh, I wanted them to come back, and they came back. Uh, you. I think that's a big part of just getting a relationship with that person. Let them know, hey man, I am new. Right. Right. So, right. So yeah, that's important to build a bridge and build a relationship with the client. Exactly. That's how your client end up turning from a client to almost like a distant relative. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And I mean, I have uh, I have uh, customers I've been cutting since day one. Um, day maybe one. maybe it's a couple, but man, they always remind me like, man, Jay, remember when you first got out of barber school and. I said, yeah, man, you, you making me old, man, but uh, I, I enjoy that. And like I said, it keeps me humble. Um, I am not uh, uh, too cocky or, or that confident. I know that uh, anything can happen. Uh, I love and I appreciate my customers coming. And uh, every time I cut their hair, it's almost like I'm starting all over again. I try to keep that mindset so I won't get too uh, displaced. You know, and a lot of barbers get to the point where they get real cocky in the game. And um, they start forgetting where they came from. Gotcha. So I try not to never forget where I came from. I like that. You know, so. Yeah, I like that. What, what, what kind of advice do you give to uh, a guy that wanted to go to barber school? He's coming to you and he said, hey, I'm thinking about going to barber school. Uh, I got me a pair of clippers. I've been watching videos. What do you think? Hmm. And, and he says he wants to go to barber school? Yeah. And he got a pair of clippers? Yeah. <laughs> One pair. One pair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, um, it's a lot. You know, you just can't have a pair of clippers and watch, you know, videotape of it. You know, there's a whole bunch to it. You, I would say uh, go cut your cousins, go cut your friends, go cut your, your father and your uncle. Gotcha. Uh, and buy uh, from the money, let's say that you uh, do donations, because you know you have to get donations. Gotcha. You're not supposed to charge. But uh, just say, hey, man, you know, I'm going to cut your hair for a donation so I get some more haircut, uh, gotcha. more clippers. Gotcha. Um, but you, you know, you need to practice. You need to keep practicing and practice and practice because uh, confidence is going to come when you uh, cut hair eventually when you know how to really cut hair. Right. And um, I, I can just tell that guy, hey man, just get more pair of clippers, watch a lot of tape, but also practice. Practice on yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of practice on myself. I still cut my own hair. Okay. So, um, you know, I cut my cousins, my, uh, my brother, my dad, my uncles, my mom, mm -hmm. um, they was there for me to, uh, uh, to hone my craft. 
And uh, I say, if you, if you want to go into the barber game, do that first. Do that first because when you get inside that barber shop at the barber school, um, they will still be there to support you. Right. But if you just want to get into barber school and you haven't done none, none of that, you're going to get inside the barber shop and nobody's going to come in there. <laughs> you know, I've seen that happen. Right. Never happened with me. But I seen it happen with the barbers I bring into my barber shop. I mm -hmm. seen them come in there. They'll, the first thing they'll say when I hire them, they'll say, "Yeah, I got a lot of people. I cut a lot of people." <laughs> oh, I said okay. <laughs> and then when they come in there, they sit in there twiddling thumbs. And I'll be looking over there. I don't want like, you know, embarrassing. I'm like, I thought you said you had people in there. No, right. I'm thinking, I thought you said you had people in there. Where are your people at? Right. You know, your friends and family will support you. Now I'll be thinking, well, maybe your friends and family is saying you can't cut no hair, you know, and they're going to wait a little bit. Make you wonder what those people are. Exactly. Gotcha. But the minute I got out of barber school, the same people who I was cutting in the kitchen or the bathroom came to the barber shop. Um, it wasn't that many of them, but they eventually came. And even my friends, when I came uh, maybe four years, five years into the game of cutting hair, um, they supported me. And now they support me more than they ever did. That's good. So that's what I would tell the, the new barber. Get it. Get your cousins, get your friends, get your brother, your sister, anybody. Cut their hair. Right. Cut your hair. Right. So, that's you what know, I'm we, we come from a different era, so I've been noticing a lot of young guys now, they're all on YouTube videos. Mm. Um, they know all these celebrity barbers, which I didn't even know was a such thing mm -hmm. when he was coming up. I think mm -hmm. I heard of a guy named G. Wiz, maybe about a year or two after I got in the shop. He had won a bunch of barber competitions yeah. in Atlanta. But, um, I think that's the difference between our generation and their generation. Mm -hmm. um, I think with us, we watch the rap videos, we mm -hmm. watch the basketball players, yeah. and then we went in the backyard, the kitchen, or the, or the bathroom, or the bedroom, and try to copy those haircuts. Yeah. And that's all we had was basically what we saw on TV or, or in a magazine, mm -hmm. word magazine, and we, we took mental pictures of it. Right. And we just said, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I mean, when Larry Johnson had a party, we was like, <laughs> everybody in the neighborhood went to Larry Johnson. <laughs> And yeah. everybody trying to put that light to some old crooked so we're just right. <laughs> yeah. And um, now you got the kids with the YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, they got videos, show them how to put waves in their hair. Mm -hmm. Show them how to do a ball fade. Mm -hmm. Show them how to do a mohawk. And we didn't have any of that. None of that. None you of know? that. So, and I, I appreciate that now. You know, technology is, is keeps uh, getting more advanced from what we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember going to the barber shop and getting my hair cut and then going home and tweaking what the barber did. Gotcha. So I learned how he faded. Um, I wasn't the best when I started and I got into the barber shop and I still learned more. Right. But by me just uh, going to the barber shop and understanding what he's doing on my head to go home and see what he has done. I may tweak right. it a little bit, I may even cut it down. But uh, I didn't, uh, I wasn't disrespecting him. It's just that I wanted to know how he was cutting hair. Right. And, and um, as far as the technology go now, I see that. but. Uh, you had to really dive into those videos. Sometimes the videos I see are like short videos. Right. Um, you know, sometimes you get to go on YouTube and if, if somebody has a tutorial of how to cut hair, stop, pause, take it in as barbers, take it in to see right. exactly what he's doing. Right. And then play again and, and go over it over and over. That's how you're going to learn. But really, you know, me and you, we know that it's going to take you to go inside that barber shop, get behind that chair and cut. It's just pure reputation. Right. Of doing what you had to do as far as be a great barber. Absolutely. Well, so I did I did a tutorial a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. put on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the tutorial, you know, as I'm doing it, my little girl, she videoed me, and then I edited it later. Mm -hmm. But while I'm doing it, I'm talking, I'm doing step by step what I'm doing, yeah. what clippers I'm using. It wasn't to actually watch the video mm -hmm. that I was like, wow, you ever felt like that when you was cutting hair? that you, you feel the magic, that like you have certain times where you like really in it, mm. and you like, man, I'm good. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, I call it the zone. Yeah, like, exactly. When you play basketball, right. you get all the shots, right. you do everything right, uh, you have a day where you have you just cut hair all just good that whole day. Exactly. And even the barbers turn around like, man, you look good. Right. You know, that. yeah, that's the feeling. I you, know it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And you, it's like something, it's like you almost like step out of yourself and yeah. see yourself, Yeah. and you're like, boy. <laughs> yeah, because if the youth is watching, then let's be that uh, beacon for them. Let, let's, when we're in that zone, let's give it to them. Because right. that zone, you can't get it just coming into the barber shop right. or coming into the barber uh, game. You have to really perfect it for a long time. And then when you get that zone, 
you're cutting everything good. And, I mean, it's it's there. Right. I know exactly what you feel. Right. <laughs> so you know, you do know that we're the old man now. We're old man. We're the old man. Yeah. yeah. As far as the barber game, um, like I said, you got these young kids watching YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. You got all these celebrity barbers out here, all these barber shows, and yeah. And we was doing this before all of that. That's right. That's so right. we actually are taking the place, or coming into the place of the guys that trained us. That's right. And I mean, it's awesome to see that the industry is even economically getting to a level where you can make uh, a lot of money or right. uh, have a platform of being famous. Right. You know, now I know of uh, celebrity bars just like yourself. Um, and I'm kind of like, you know, admiring them guys. And it's, it's, it's good to see people like them that should take barbering to another level. Right. Um, even when you see like the businesses that they have, they taking it to like selling products. Right. Um, they even selling the videos of how to cut hair. Um, then they come out with their own barber tools. So gotcha. it, it's awesome, man. I think that um, if we stay, well, we're gonna stay in the game. That's that's for certain. Oh yeah. But I think if we propel or for y'all young barbers who decide to uh, cut hair and you get that zone, let's say you get that zone about four or five times, you may be ready. You may be ready for some competitions. Right. After the competitions, sell product. And then sell product and then put out your own tools because it's almost like the basketball uh, NBA. You know, you got the players that play good. Guess what comes next? They get shoes. Gotcha. They get endorsements. So gotcha. barbering is, is taking it to that level. Right. You know, I don't think you should stop just at cutting hair. Gotcha. You, know, you should take it to another level. I got Definitely. You. So. You know, um, the funny thing about you see in 2018 where barbers are starting to take it to that level. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of made me feel like we should have always been there. It's almost like we're taking it to a, we we taking our rightful stand mm -hmm. where we were. You know, mm -hmm. you figure back when we was teenagers, mm -hmm. and we looking at Big Daddy Kane, Kid and Play, yep. Salt and Pepper, Bobby Brown. We're looking at their haircuts, mm -hmm. and we're going to the barber shop saying, "I want mine like that." Yeah. Or we're in the neighborhood trying to get ours like that. Mm -hmm. It was the barber that did that. That's right. You know, it was. You know, we look at celebrities and we feel like, oh man. I want my haircut like Bobby Brown, but you gotta look at the guy that produced that haircut. That's right. That's the barber. Exactly. So the man behind the scene is what made that guy his right. front look good. That's right. And he really didn't get no credit until the movie came out. And right. we realized that that haircut that Bobby Brown had was a mistake. Right. And it became a fad and trend now, and everybody wants it. And um, I, I wore the gummy. You wore the gummy? I had a gummy. <laughs> I had the <to> gummy. <laughs> I actually got a picture with some glasses. We gonna talk about that though. <laughs> but um, I always tell people, I say, you know, sometimes haircuts are a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, something happens. Uh, I heard that uh, Salt and Pepper was just talking about. Um, I believe it was Pepper. I think had uh, her stylist did the same thing. She chopped off one side, right. and she had a show in like minutes. So she had to do the show with that chopped off mushroom. Mm -hmm. I guess it was called mushroom. But anyway, it became a fad. Everybody was wearing it. Right. So along with the Bobby Brown and the salt and pepper hairstyle, I think that um, now that the technology is what it is, people are getting credit, or that guy just now getting credit. But as you see, and I always tell this story about um, Curtis Smith. Curtis Puff Daddy's, I think Puff Daddy's barber. Gotcha. His name's Curtis Smith. He um, invented, and I always tell people, I think he invented the South of France haircut. Uh, that's that mohawk where it's kind of wide uh, gotcha. in the front and wide in the back, and you can do anything with it. But it's mostly it's kind of like skin, just a slight bit around the ears. Mm -hmm. But he gets credit. I give him the credit because that's the first person I've seen do it. Right. But Because uh, it wasn't like the Mr. T look him off. Exactly. Gotcha. You know, nobody gave Mr. T. Well, people gave Mr. T credit, but in the era that Mr. T wore that mohawk was in that punk era. Exactly. That, you know, yeah. you know, we were more hip hop. And it was uh, daring for him to try that haircut. Right. But if you say if you speak of Mr. T, you think of Mohawk. Right. You know, and nobody knows originally where the Mohawk or the South of France came from. I know where it came from. I seen it. Yeah, Thanks so much. Thank you all for tuning in. I'd like to thank Master Barber Jason Williams for showing up. And until next time, peace and power. If you would like to be featured on the Barber's Corner, contact us at 910-273-3355 or by email supertrav1 at yahoo.com.